Matt Schofield, how are you doing? Woo! That think... no pedal show yeah, is my I... board. <laughs> <Wait>. <laughs> so this is really your fault. What, okay. what you did is you made everything so good sounding that I realized I didn't need all of it anymore. And I'm not even joking about that. <laughs> <laughs> the Mad right. Professor. This is, so this Hi. is the Mad Professor. <laughs> yeah. Hello, awesome. everybody. <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about playing loud, because yeah. you play at a volume that, I guess, by modern standards, people would call loud. Oh, yeah. You know, it's your responsibility, if you're going to play loud, to make it sound good. Hey guys, welcome to that pedal show. Dan here, Mick here, and Matt Schofield. How are you doing? Woo! We're also joined by friends today. We've got Damien from Kurt Mangan Strings and Reunion Blues Gig Guys. We've got Paddy who's playing the bass today because you'll notice that there are other instruments. And we've got Harry from Mad Professor in the room. And we've got Simon and we've got Fraser. Everyone clap. Give Matt a clap. <laughs> it's like I always wanted a radio show. And that would work, wouldn't it? You know, the, <laughs> yeah. The drummer is outside. Yes. He's, Doug, got, he's going to come in late. Dougie's. As this is away. Yeah. We've got faces for radio as well, as they yeah. say. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you will notice there are a non guitar shaped object there and um, another one back there. That is like a guitar, but different. Just so, a bit wrong. We, we do have the hope of music today. So, the hope of music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something resembling music. Yeah, yeah. Um, what are you doing here, Matt? Um, I'm actually mostly just on my way past. I uh, was just in Switzerland for a couple of nights last week doing gigs, and then I was in Germany doing a gig, and then I was in Holland doing a little uh, clinic thing with uh, two rock stuff. And uh, then on Monday, I'm doing a gig in Guildford, uh, which is put together by Andertons and oh. uh, Kurt Mangan Strings. And uh, reunion blues gig bags. Nice. And Get that uh, in there. Awesome. And, and Damien yeah. here. Well, that's. Are you happy, Damien? Yeah, Damien, yeah. Damien <laughs> actually <laughs> made the whole thing come together. And yeah, it's he the, did. It's, he did. So uh, yeah. it's the first time um, I've, um, you know, played. It's actually the first time I've done a gig in the UK with my own band in a couple of years. And since I've got this thing with uh, Harry here, you know, I that think, no pedal show yeah, is my I, board. <laughs> <laughs> We'll get onto that in a minute. <laughs> yeah. If you haven't seen the previous uh, episodes with Matt, check out our um, uh, video list on YouTube there. We've done a couple over the years, one back in the old studio. Um, we did one in Germany when we talked about dimension effects and we've just sort of bumped into each other over the years. Yeah. Uh, Matt and I go back a long way. Oh yeah, the other video we did was at the tunnels in Bristol. Oh yes. That's where right. Dan put you together a really nice Quartermaster 6 board. He did. And, um, All this stuff. Things have changed. And they have. You told me an interesting story about that. Well, yeah, but here's the thing. So this is really your fault. What, okay. what you did is you made everything so good sounding that I realized I didn't need all of it anymore. And I'm not even joking about that. <laughs> <laughs> because 
so when you know I'd had that big buzzy look call, but it hummed and mm-hmm. you know, I was probably losing. I really went losing lots of signal. It turned out. So then you did the quartermaster, and I was still, and then I could flip flop yep. with that. Yep. And uh, then I turned that off, and it was just basically the sound of forty feet of cable into a amp, and I was like. Well, that sounds amazing now. Right. <laughs> so the, all the bypass, I was like, so this is all messing it up. So then, you know, I was still flip-flopping two overdrives. Mm-hmm. So then I started talking to Harry because I'd been using the Royal Blue overdrive anyway. Yeah. Yep. And he'd sent me the cymbal or the twimble pedal, which oh yeah, which um, sounded amazing. Oh well, we'll come to that bit uh, in a bit more in a minute. But basically, then I was like, well, if I could get it down to one pedal that had A and B built in the pedal, then I wouldn't nice. need anything else. So it is sort of your fault. Okay, I'll take you've that. Put yourself, I'll take that. You put yourself out of a job. That's but all it right. was. It, so then it sent me on this whole thing of like getting rid of everything. Sure. So I actually put this little board together to, to travel with, um, with your power supply, oh. but. Um, um, because I haven't even had a board for, for the last yeah, year and a half. Last time I talked to you, you said, I'm, not using, I'm just going straight in. Because yeah. all my favorite guitar players, that's the way they I was trying it. to get to that. Maybe mm. I even will one day. You know, right. I'm not quite brave enough to have nothing at all yet. But for a while, I just had the delay back on the amp. and uh, in, in the loop? Or no, no, in, just in out of fun. my mind. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. some of it's like psychological. And wow. So then I had just the Supreme, but I couldn't, you know, I couldn't live with having a headstock tuner because it's just not cool. So um, I then, so I had to have a floor tuner. So mm-hmm. then I had the Supreme and the floor tuner. And, uh, you know, some of my amps have to trim in, but um, I do like a bit of trim. Um, so that's still the little Henretta tremolo. Um, mm-hmm. And he just made me one with the knobs on the outside yet, but I haven't put it on there. So uh, I'll, get, I'll get two more knobs on my pedal board. So I'm, nice. go, I'm going yeah. a bit bigger again. Yeah, right. I'll get a call, I think, in about yeah, exactly. in, you yeah, know, yeah. 18 months' time. Yeah. And, oh, it's, this has gone crazy again and... It absolutely reflects the journey that you can all yeah. Uh, yeah. completely understand. That you go, oh, I just want it simple. And then you go, well, well, I just need an overdrive. Oh, and a delay, and a tremolo, and a tuner. Yeah. And then next it'll be something else. Yeah. And I would like, I think I've already like ended up putting the Vermi Room fuzz that I use yeah, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. But I'd put that first anyway. So sure. that can still go on the floor there, the you outside. know, or the, occasionally a wah wah, you know. What, what drives the, um, the desire for simplicity then? Um, trying to not be thinking about that stuff, really, you know, uh, both in, in playing and, uh, and gear, you know, so I, I, I don't really look for any gear anymore, you know, I'm not obsessing over it, I like everything that I have, mm. and doing the Supreme um, with Harry was like the last step, so can I just get it all out of, of one pedal, right. you know. This um, is really interesting. We're yeah. talking about that the flip flop thing, and when yeah. we were doing the soundtrack before, it was just seeing how you use it, which was awesome. So uh, it's basically a dual overdrive, two different sections. Yeah. But you have a different overdrive for your neck pickup and a different overdrive for your bridge pickup. It's kind of that, yeah. And that was sort of the idea. Um, the left side is the royal blue, right, from Mad Professor. Uh, so I was using that, but I used that on the bridge. I use that on all the pickups. Okay, one. yeah. So right. you can. Uh... It's a magic gig bag. I think we talked about it last time. It does the cleaning up thing nicely, you know. Uh, but I can use it to tone down a little bit there and still. I use that side for everything, you right? Know? So yep. neck pickup. All the bridge pickup with it rolled down a bit, and it's. Um... Um, it's um, it's pretty cool for uh, for everything, but then just when you need that little extra push over the cliff, um, <laughs> um, I wanted something that just went a bit thick, that almost brought like the um, the uh, 
low mids back in on the bridge pickup. So it was almost as broad sounding as the neck pickup. Right. Um, so it was um, the the twimble sound. It, it was great, but it was much more compressed than I like. It really mm. does that classic overdrive special overdrive channel right. thing. And it's really great at that. But I couldn't, with how I use a big, clean, loud amp, and then this side is like push in in the more traditional like mm -hmm. tube screamy tube screamery sense. You know what I mean? Where you push the amp a bit. Um, so it didn't work. So uh Harry, what's um what's the the, the, the Twimble guy's name? Uh Lassi Ukkonen. Lassi Ukkonen. That's uh, pretty good. That's yeah. Pretty yeah. Good. He uh he so he'd done the twimble and the symbol, right? Yeah. And so um, then they went back and changed it. So it's, what do you say, more like power amp kind of uh, overdrive on this side now. So it's, the headroom is different, right? So. Yeah, we actually ended up like this. Harry, come here. Come, come, come on, come Harry. Here. Please, have a seat. The Mad right. Professor. This is, so Hi. this is the Mad <laughs> Professor. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, awesome. everybody. It has a different kind of a, a compression that it didn't quite match the... Uh, the, the royal blue side and also the output was was lower yeah so we ended up like working a totally new design that that will will be in, in a perfect um, uh, uh, balance between the the other side so it still has like the same kind of textures yeah, the overdrive right. right yeah but it because and I'm sure you guys have talked about compression and stuff on uh, quite often what seems apparently gainier and bigger actually gets smaller if you sure. were to like look at it perhaps on the recording, you mm -hmm. know. It, mm -hmm. So I wanted something that had more gain but also got bigger sound. And so yeah, they went back to the drawing board on it, and mm -hmm. um, but it kept that really textured um, overdrive. So it should be quite loud now because. You know. <laughs> Again, we're on 50 watts instead of 100, so it's, uh, so it's not quite it's there. Crushing a little bit as well back there, the delay's splatting a bit, but um, you get the idea. Yeah. But uh, wow. yeah, so it's kind of got that chew in it still, yeah. which is the, the Twimble really had that chewiness, but um, it gets bigger. Well, so that was that was the that was the plan, wasn't it? And then, so it doesn't flip flop like your switch. So I, but I can just go. There's on and off, and I can go one side to the other. Right. With okay. One, yeah. One yeah. switch. Yep. Yeah. So or turn it on and off. And if you want loads of gain, you can stack them. Oh wow! But um, do you know what? I've never even tried it. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. go. This is going to be mental now. <laughs> <laughs> not very good at it anymore. <laughs> it sounds kind of fuzzy in that setting. Yeah, I mean, I probably yeah. you could probably. There's a lot of low end going through on that first side at that point into the next, so you could, because that's this is the cool thing on this side, you could bring the lows back up. Fills in what you lose on the bridge pickup, so it sort of sounds as full as the neck pickup. Kind of, that's what I was digging about it. So probably if you stack them, but get rid of some of that. <laughs> But that's far more than I like to use myself, you know, so. Mm. I just yeah. Wanted, I just wanted to hear 100 watts. 
just for a few minutes. Oh, yeah. We'll hear yeah. 100 watts when Matt plays with the band. Yeah. Okay, Harry, you'll finish it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Came, Very all, good. came all the way from Phil. Right. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I've been saving that one up. Yeah. <laughs> but, you, <laughs> um, but you know what? These Just saying, working with these guys and stuff, um, we are, as I got to know them over the last couple of years, we realised that... Um, we like a lot of the same music, so we yeah, would hang wow. out and go to, you know, Harry would come to a gig or we'd be out and about, and we'd end up talking about music that we like. Not just the tones, but that would come into it. Mm. And all the way back, like, he's turned me on to, like, old Chicago blues that I'd never heard. So huh. not just, like, Jimmy onwards, but, like, some of the really old funky sounds as well. So then everything of his that I try, you end up going, well, this is... It makes sense because we're all coming from the same place musically. Yeah, Do you know yeah. what I mean? Not yeah. just gear wise, but we, um, we, so then his stuff always sounds right to me because I think it's to do with that. Imagine thinking about music while making <laughs> gear. Imagine yeah. that. Imagine that. Imagine that. You know, it's so, interesting that that's kind of brand family sound thing. I definitely have brands that I, that yeah. I, gravitate towards and others yeah. that don't work for me and, you know, which is absolutely the opposite for other people and for sure. you and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that just sort of fits into the streamlined nature of what I'm into these days. Of it, so that fits with that fits with Two Rock. Everybody's same with Eli from Two Rock. You know, we like all the same records mm. and the same yeah, guitar yeah. sounds, and so then it makes sense that I plug into this stuff. And oh, off we go. It's so, all just like home because I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel in any way at all. I'm just trying to please myself, really. You know, and then not have to deal with um, too much outside of actually trying to play well, you know, so.
I want to talk a little bit about playing loud. Because yeah. you play at a volume that, I guess, by modern standards, people would call loud. Oh, yeah. But it never sounds loud to me. Or at least no, it, I it's know moving. Exactly what you mean. And you know that it's loud, but it never hurts. And it never... So how... It's never harsh. It's uh, Yeah. 80, 90% of the world are telling us they're not allowed to play loud anymore mm. above 82 dB or whatever it is in some venues. How do you? How is that working for you in your life? Um, it's not very rarely a problem. I mean, I do carry the Perspex shield around quite mm. often, but that it doesn't really make it quieter. It just makes it less directional. But right. it's, um, So when, it's, when there's a front row, as they often are, sat just in front of where our knees would be, are now compared to the amp, you know... Um, then I put, I'll put the shield up, but it, outdoors and stuff like that, I don't, and uh, or in a larger room. Um, but it really is, you know, it's your responsibility if you're going to play loud to make it sound good. Um, really, yeah. <laughs> it's like I love that. There you go. Um, perfect. So to be able to get the frequency response of, of everything, right? We last time we talked about, I kind of see it as gain staging, you know, everything. Yeah. So from and from the guitar volume onwards. Mm -hmm. So first of all, I don't play on ten all the time on the guitar. I mean, even in the middle of a solo, it might it comes up and it comes down to try and sculpt all the notes as, m as much as they can be sculpted into sounding as good as I can make them sound, mm -hmm. you know? And that's like a constantly moving target. You're constantly really analyzing what you actually sound like and how the overall effect, do you know what I mean? And then adjusting, it's, it's, you know, adjusting how you actually play the guitar, you know. So. Bridge pickup, like, because you can make this sound pretty nasty if you hit it nasty, but you can also make it sound. like softer or whatever just mm. from picking so it but it is possible you know if i hand somebody my rig my guitar and they sit in and they're just wide open on everything from the get-go they'll would be told to turn down as well so mm -hmm. it's that um with great power comes great responsibility <laughs> yeah spider-man right i just learned <laughs> yeah, that yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you've got so what you've got is a dynamic range yes. that you can work within yeah and when it needs to be loud, it's there. Yeah. But then when you come and the, the whole band comes down, you've just got all that space to work within. Yeah, the whole band plays on like something like 60 to 70% of maximum out of the gate. You know, when we yeah, come out yeah, of the yeah, gate. Yeah, yeah. And then by the end of my first solo, we'll probably be like 90 for about maybe a whole verse. And then it comes back down to 60. So the whole band is like living and breathing. And then the, the second tune of the night, the first versus the solo, will drop it right down to 30%. And, and so you're never bombarded yeah. for too long. So, But then maybe I'll get a couple of verses where I am just wide open and it's... But by then it's, it's an effect in sure. and of itself, yeah. you see. Um, so it's weird, like the more powerful my amps have got, the less loud I play all the time. Hmm. And then you realize, you know, it's a bit, I've made this analogy and someone else by coincidence made it to me the other day, but it's like having a great, you know, a racing car. Hmm. This is a highly tuned racing car and I now know how to drive it well, if you know what I mean. Yeah, right. um, but if, if, I actually got in a real racing car and I just put my foot all the way on the floor. You're just going to crash into the first corner sure. and, and you're done. And conversely, a uh, great racing driver could drive a little family car around the track faster than we could. You know, so it's that, that yeah, yeah. combination of man and machine there, really. Um, and you utilizing everything to its, to its fullest, but not flat out all mm. the time. And I'm sitting now, one, way, one thing I learned that on a lot recently is when I'm, when I'm home, I'm not on tour with my band. Home is? Uh, Florida, he says, yes, uh, Jupiter, Florida. So, we, you know, I get together with um, just friends and we just go out and just play some blues on a Tuesday night quite often if we're home. 
nobody knows it's happening, you know. Um, and I take a big amp, maybe a 112, but probably the classic reverb. Uh, but nothing's mic'd up. It's just, you know, mm, yeah. drums, bass, a singer. And uh, so you can't come out. And it's it's a club full of patrons. They, they've not come to see me in this case. You know? Right. Um, so you can't play like flat out, but I really got into playing like that. And so starting out the night on five or six with everything set as I would on my own gig, but just easing it in. And so now I'm trying to bring that back into my into my own music, which is funny because that's what happened when I made my first little trio live record. And it was just my 61 Strat and a Super Reverb and a Menatone Red Snapper. That was, huh. that was I it. I remember that. Well, I loved was that, well, that album. 2003. Right, wow. That's all I, oh, Boss TU2 you know, tuning, yeah. Um, I, uh, that's how I played then because I'd been playing in other people's bands and I didn't yeah, have right. any power to just waltz into a club with a super reverb on seven. And, uh, you know, so I had to feed in and then gradually you add a couple more pedals and then it becomes, you play in slightly bigger places with much more sound reinforcement. So then you get to a point where this is my overdrive that I stand on when I go for a solo and everything's all the way, you know? And and that's fine as well, but I've just kind of gone full circle of getting it to almost like this is on and I have two choices. This is actually on that side most of the time. So mm. it's almost like playing straight in and then I can give it a bit more or I can turn it off and have a different thing. So yeah, right. yeah so um, again, in a year it might be different and I might be fuzz and univibe or something. But I you got my still, number. Yeah. <laughs> still kind of want to be BB King though, you know, it, when I grow up. So... I saw John Schofield even uh, like a year. Your dad? Yes, my dad, John Schofield. <laughs> I have seen that. I have pe people say is yeah, yeah. My first ever review of my first US gig, there was it was in the paper the next day, the local paper, and it said, uh, Matt, son of John. And I'm like... <laughs> they don't even spell it the same. It's not even spelled the same. And you've, you've done so little research that you've actually just made that up because it's not <laughs> true. You know, if you'd have looked for one second. Anyway... Um, uh, where, where were we? Why was I saying that? Can't remember. You were listening to John Schofield. Yeah, I went to see him at um, the uh, Kennedy Center in New York, and he did that loud and quiet jazz gig with the two different bands. So the first set was the quiet jazz, and he just came out with his Ibanez, and he plugged into a, uh, I think it was like a vibe, blackface Vibrolux. Um, and then he came back for the next set, and it was the the la you know Dennis Chambers doing the kind of eighties fusion stuff they oh, did. No way. And he plugged into an AC thirty flat out, but no pedals. And you know he often had a big board and loopers yeah. and all stuff well, like that. Well, that's why he had but that going. Both sides of those gigs, the two totally set, and he did them both straight in the amp. And I was like, he's the daddy, yeah. end level boss. That is, <laughs> you know, it is though. It's like that's. There's a great paradox in that challenge. So. <laughs> The challenge to your to yourself is yeah. I can do this, and then it's just me in the amp, and therefore that's yeah. more pure. But actually, what I think a lot of pedal fans probably wouldn't be able to grasp hold of very quickly if you've never done it is actually the amount of light and shade in that is yeah. colossal. Yeah, yeah. Because mm. you think, well, I don't have anything. All I've got is this guitar and this cable and this amp. What else is there? And yeah. actually, there's a huge amount. Yeah. Maybe we should try it, Dan. I don't know. That no pedal <laughs> show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's our future, isn't it? But you know, it's it, then yeah. it's the good thing about trying <laughs> that. <type> in. <laughs> and yeah. The good thing about experiencing that, or even practicing like that, or even going and doing a gig like that, is it makes you come back to all these things and approach them differently. Yeah, so that's absolutely. why I fell in love with the Royal Blues pedal originally, is because you can use it like that, mm. but then it also allows you to essentially go past what you have with just straight in the amp. You see, mm. So I get like everything that you get from playing straight in the amp with the volume control. Yeah. But I can go, so it is then like having been able to go to 11, really. Yeah, yeah You know, because sure. which I wouldn't be able to do, wouldn't get the same response by just turning the amp up more. Mm. It's like, yeah. I never thought a Super Reverb sounded better past six. You know, it never sounded mm. better on 10 than on six, but it do, does sound better throwing a tube screamer or a clon into it, sure. you know, so. Uh, Steinhardt. I have a question. Yes. You mentioned before about using the tone control and the bridge pickup. Yes. And that's something that you do as well. I mean, because I'm a telly guy and I like it bright, I, I don't touch my tone control at all. How do you approach that on the bridge pickup? Um, same way as I um, remember we did the amp dialing in thing yeah, where yeah. you find the, the spot. Yes. So that's... Uh... Is 
that little kind of wah there. So it's normally around six or seven. So I, I put that there, you know, I have to turn it more. Fifty watts. I've never noticed that before. It does change. The, 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 We're going to have to hear the difference now. You've mentioned it. Do you know what? Is that a 0022? No idea. Sounds. It doesn't sound like a four seven or a one. It doesn't sound like a vintage value because they take away all the yeah. mids as well. You'd have they? to ask Mister Simon Law about that. Yeah. It's uh, whatever he puts in them. I don't get. He, I don't get to pick any. He just makes them and he goes there. You go. <laughs> Pretty much. Because <laughs> in the um, so the vintage ones are either. 0047 or 1. Yeah. Now 7 or 8 again, we get. Right, I'm talking through the reverb again then. Sorry. I think we can. I, think we can <laughs> I would say that's a. A 2-2 two, two or a 3-3, three, three, I reckon, uh, I guess. Simon, well, I'm going to text Simon and see if he... Yeah, we'll ask see him. If he will let us know. Can we hear this between 50 and 100, seeing as you... Yeah. So, 50, yeah? Much clearer to me. Yeah. And... It's not really that much louder, it's mm. just better. And um, <laughs> in another surprising sentence I would never have expected to come from you, Matt, it was, yes. can we use the ox, please, to take off just a touch? Yeah, yeah. Um, I've had, uh, you know, just not really expecting, but ended up using it um, on my True Fire videos. Yeah, um, go and buy Matt's True Fire videos, by the way. Yeah, do, please go and buy them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, it's, um, so there I'm in a studio and I'm playing to, uh, sorry, thank you. Sorry. Yeah. I don't even hear it anymore. There's people on YouTube so, going, he touches my knobs all the time. time. So many uh, years of just humming amps, I'm not even aware of it. Um, yeah, there's, um, you know, there in the studio I'm playing to tracks that I've made to, for the course through stereo monitors as though you're in a, a, a studio control room. So to have that next to me trying to if you you'd have i don't know if you could, you'd have to have huge a pa you know to, yeah, yeah, to yeah, make the course. tracks as loud as that yeah so luckily they got that so i was able to just turn it all the way off and just get the guitar playback through um through the monitors which is very much like if i'm overdubbing a solo on a student on a record or something i'll do it in the control room mm. and, and uh, through the monitors rather than headphones are the devil you know um so I got used to using it like that, and then I realized that um, even just that 3 dB drop um, makes it just a bit more manageable in, sure. a, in a small room. In fact, And that's the drop with it being wide open. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so yeah. it's not actually, yeah. when you plug aux in, it attenuates a little bit, even yeah. though it's in its widest open setting. <laughs>
you mentioned recording uh, records and stuff like that. Where where are we? Where are we? oh where? yeah, well that's a big question, isn't it? But, um, <laughs> as you know, yeah, I did did uh, a session last year with my original trio with Johnny Henderson and Evan Jenkins. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, I've just got to finish it now. Basically, uh, I got I got a f- three more songs to sing. I thought it'd be very nice to do this session and go home. And when I'm not out on the road, you know, a friend of mine's got a studio, I can nip in and sing one of the songs and mm. do it kind of yeah. like that. Um, but that turns out is is wrong um, because uh, the long, the further away you get from the session, the more you're in a different place musically. Anyway, mm. yeah, yeah. Uh, and then also, you know, I finally um, became a homeowner two years ago. Um, so just different priorities in life. You know, I've, been, I've mainly been in a van since, certainly since 2010. Yeah. And so to actually have a little place of my own and you're like, wow, this is what people do, isn't it? You know, <laughs> like rather I'll than... Oh, he's growing up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I've got to just knuckle... I'm, I'm going to be home in October and sing those last three songs, get it mixed. Um, but I've also got, in the meantime, I've ended up with a whole other project with the, uh, a different rhythm section, my US rhythm section, who were just in Switzerland with me, uh, Raoul and Tim. Uh, we've sort of fallen into this other thing that wasn't really a plan, and then with Christine singing, and, and uh, also we're trying to get some horns involved, because I also didn't want to play in a trio for the rest of my life. Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah, the, yeah, yeah. you do a lot of things when you're 25 and your first record comes out. You do a lot of things with a view to where that's going to take you. Sure. And then for 90% of us playing blues guitar these days, it does take you there. And 15 years later, you're still <laughs> in the same, maybe a bit better known around the place. But fundamentally, mm. you're in the same situation as like, you know, there's, I can feed the same amount of mouths on a tour, you know. And so, um, but I really, like I say, wanted to be B.B. King. And, and especially, you know, I, I don't want to play a lot of notes. I don't want to play loads of guitar because nobody that I listen to and really love does. So I kind of want to be able to go and sing a song or, you know, have a singer come out and kind of be a band leader and, you know, yeah. that kind of stuff. Different stuff So um, uh, that inspires me. But it's trying to get that together in the music industry that we sure. exist in now. Is, yeah, yeah. Is a different. So you've got two drummers, eight-piece horn section. Yeah, two keyboard. Well, players. exactly. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's but it is a thing that like when you see Tedeschi Trucks Band, yeah, that is a festival headlining machine. Sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and these days, you can't go out with a trio, even if you're Jimi Hendrix experience or Stevie Ray Vaughan in Double Trouble. It's hard to close a trio, uh, cl- close a festival with a trio these days mm. because it's such a visual world that we live in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, everybody watching everything and filming everything. Yeah. The, um, just listening to Hendrix play these days wouldn't be enough. So you need that spectacle. And I will say that the gigs I've done with the bigger lineup it creates a different response from the, certainly from the non-guitar nerds, so, you yeah. know. So there's yeah. always going to be the people there who just want to get smashed around the head with 100 watt 2 rock, and that's mm. great. But, you know, to broaden your um, your chances. Mm. Uh, yeah. You yeah. mean like ordinary humans? Yeah, yeah, just maybe casual music fans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you know any of those? <laughs> Not many. <laughs> yeah. no. I will, I All will my friends say, are in this room. <laughs> I will say, as a guitar nerd, um, seeing you in the trio in mm. the early days, uh, that gig changed my life. Yeah, well, that's very you know, cool to but hear. It, it was, and it's still in one of the top 10 gigs I've ever seen, ever. Well, thank life. you. Thank yeah, you, ama- amazing stuff. Yeah, when we, it was 2003, and we were we were a bit ahead of, ahead of a curve, really. Uh, and yeah. we didn't, I say that not to brag, to say that we sort of fell through a crack somewhere and yeah. didn't get... People didn't really get it. It like organ trio, bit funky, bit jazzy. Got a lot of reviews that were like, "Guys are too jazzy," and <laughs> not bluesy enough. Not, not bluesy like... <laughs> enough. Yeah, and, and the blues police hated it. The jazz yeah, police, no. exactly. Not jazzy enough for the jazzers. Oh, not boy. bluesy enough. Yeah, yeah, really, yeah, that's yeah, really yeah. true. And now that seems to have filtered much more into people's general consciousness. And in fact, most of the questions I answer most of the time, and I've pretty much made two true fire courses about it is how do you put that jazzy stuff in your guitar playing in your blues playing you know yeah. so um yeah but back 
15 years ago, it was a bit like, mm, you know, it wasn't Stevie Ray, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what, what I loved about that format, uh, so Johnny Henderson on keys. Let's know. get Johnny Honk. Yeah, where, yeah. Honking? actually, and Evan. Honking yeah. Johnny and Evan. Um, Have we mentioned anyone else? We mentioned Derek Trucks. Can anyone honk him? You yeah, him? I know Derek. Yeah. You should honk Derek. Not very well, but enough. Yeah, yeah enough to honk him. Anyone else? You mentioned anyone else? B.B. King. I'd met B.B. King. Oh, I saw him <laughs> when he was out here. One of the most satisfying honks we've ever had. Yeah. That's yeah, the biggest incredible. honk. Yeah, yeah. But what thing I loved about the the organ trio is the space it gave you yeah. to do your thing. Yeah. yeah. You know? And those... Um, and, well, and really, wanting to have the bigger band would be an extrapolation of that, that Yes, to me. right, of course. Um, and I think I said, like now for me, a good gig is when I feel like I've not played too much. And to mention B.B. King again, and, and guys like B.B., they never did anything stupid. Right. Know, they never played. I'm out. <laughs> no, but do you, know, do you know, and that, it actually means not, I'm not saying not going for things. B.B., I got bootlegs where he's like playing, like, Django, Charlie Christian type diminished lines in the 80s stuff. Yeah, right. Incredible. But it was never gratuitous sure. or it yeah. was a genuine, let me see where this takes it. Mm. And uh, so now I'm like, along with getting down to that, it's like, I feel like I don't want to be playing a hundred percent of what I know in every solo, you know, and that there's a way to spread it out throughout the gig that makes it even more engaging. Sure. If you like yeah. to take a real journey, each solo, I want to be a journey and each, um, the whole gig, I want to be its kind of journey as well. And, and that goes for having maybe a singer come up and do something because I'm a reluctant singer, but um, I'm all right. But, I uh, I was but then, singer. but then, <laughs> but then, you know, if you hear Christine sing, well, she's, she sings as good as I play guitar. So then if you put your ego aside about things, it's like that just makes the music better yeah, yeah, over, yeah, overall. Yeah. So that's really, it's all that stuff, you know. That's that's the answer to uh, why the other record's still not out, by the way. We're still yeah, talking yeah. about <laughs> That's all part of no, that answer, it, you know. Uh, what I love about it is, is this journey, and it is a lifelong journey. Yeah. Mm. And it is it feels like, you know, here we are 20 years later or whatever, mm having enough pleasure to be able to watch it kind of unfolding all right it's your life but it is it does feel like a journey i really have been thinking about what kind of player i want to be for the next half when if i'm up. lucky enough to yeah, to right. do, have the same amount of time again on earth you know yeah, so yeah. i've been playing 30 years next year so maybe i've got maybe i'm sort of halfway through playing yeah. if i live an average life at 42 now you know what i mean so um and and it's like, yeah, you get up to that. And I'm like, well, what, but what, yeah, what do I want to be? And it, when I go out there, I, I'm now, my concern is just like that thing, trying not to do anything stupid, trying to play just the right thing that means something. And uh, it's hard. It's hard. It's mm. harder. To, I'm finding it. It's a, that's my challenge now is to not do anything stupid. Also, all the other things involved in getting to those two hours on stage to do that, yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's like a whole process, you know, I mean, Again, I wasn't when I say I was in a van a lot, especially since 2010. I, I was driving that van much of the time as well. Yeah, so yeah. You, in the US, you might. And I'm not. I'm not just saying this is not just me. This is most of us who do this. So, you yeah. know, uh, it, you might drive seven. We've done 11 hour drives, and then you get out, and then you load in yourself, <laughs> and then you have to be brilliant for two hours for everybody who has no idea what the previous, you know. 15 yeah. hours in tail. Oh, we drove all night because they, you know, they closed the highway. It was flooded from a hurricane to get to Washington, D.C. And, and got to the gig just in time for soundcheck, having driven from Miami to Washington, D.C. That's like a whole day's drive. And got, so we didn't go to bed at all and then played a beautiful venue in Washington, D.C. That's a lovely, like, you'd never know in a million years that we hadn't slept at all all night. And that, but, so all of that becomes part of the process as, as like, get getting just getting through it, do you yeah, know, yeah. like, and, um, but then also you go, well, I can't do that forever. It ages you and it tires you and, and uh, it's not really um, particularly healthy for yourself or um, relationships or anything, you know, so uh, it's all balance in this, in this game for, as a, as a, as a professional trying to get through it, you know. And it must have a creative result somewhere down the line as well. So your situation changes, your mindset changes, and then presumably as a result of that, 
the music evolves and changes. Yeah, and that is another reason. Uh, as I say, some of it's my fault, some of it's deliberate. I haven't actually held off on making a record because, yeah, I do really want to get this one to be okay. And this is where we go from from now. I'm yeah. I'm different. I have different aspirations as a player than I did when I was 25. And mm. uh, so you, sometimes you have to step back and not just keep churning out stuff just so the next blues festival will give you a slot, you know, yeah, yeah. for better or for worse. Uh, yep. You know, it's like, I'm going to step back a little bit and see what I actually sound like. Well, Matt, it has been awesome Thank to you. see you, mate. It's always, always awesome, always deeply humbling. Oh, man. Um, we Thank want you, you to put the not doing anything stupid on hold for about <laughs> the next half <laughs> okay, hour. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. we we're going we're gonna, to... Uh, have a little play and, and do some of that. Have we talked about everything? We talked about the Supreme, which is important to mention that. It's mm. really important to mention the True Fire courses. Please, please, please go and check Matt's yeah, True Fire courses out, um, either via his own website or the True Fire course. Um, dates? Do we need to know about dates? Um, there's none over here for a while, but this okay. is worldwide, isn't it? I'll yeah. be in Canada for a gig uh, up in uh, Ontario near, near uh, Niagara Falls, actually, on the 14th of the Friday, October, and then I'll be in Boston and the Knickerbocker in Rhode Island. So uh, on in November, uh, also the middle of the month, and um, all on your website. Yeah, that'll be on there somewhere. MattScofield.com. Uh, yes, if I've updated it, I do that as well. <laughs> <laughs> I am I am my own media manager. <laughs> you know, it's all hands on deck, but they're all my hands at the moment. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, you know. yeah, here, yeah. And. Uh, we share we share strings, don't we, Daniel? We do. We're all Kurt Mangan family, so we yeah, should give yeah. them a plug as well. Uh, you can buy those from that pedal show store. You know, you just need to buy stuff. That's the important thing. We right? should keep, us all, keep it going. I've, yeah. In in eleven years of u- using them, I've broken one once on a gig. Wow. So that's and that's so that's pretty good. I I can say till this summer I'd not broken any. But uh, Touching wood. and do you know what? It's because we'd had a terrible couple of drives in Italy, and I didn't get a chance to. Change. It was like just got to get out of the van yeah. and get, get on. on. Yeah, right. And I was like, I can get through them, and I always change them. And this was two in a row, so it was a third gig that I had to do on the same set, which I've, I never do. And uh, I said, because it was somebody else's fault, we were late, and I said, <laughs> if I break a string tonight. It's that guy's fault, and I said that before a gig, and sure enough, I popped the high. That's the only one. That's pretty good. That's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. In eleven yeah, years or something, you can't yeah. say too much. So, yeah. about so if you that. want us all to have turkey for Christmas, please buy. Please buy. Some <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Cheers, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, massive thank you to our preferred retailers in the UK and Europe is uh, Anderson's Music of Guildford in Surrey, and in Australia would be Pedal Empire of Brisbane, Queensland. A massive thank you to everyone that's gone to thatpedalshowstore.com and grabbed some strings. Strings or backing tracks t-shirts or t-shirts and pedals and all there journals journals pencils did you say oh, pencils I haven't said pencils yeah yeah all right remember we want turkey for christmas uh also massive thank you to our patrons on patreon guys thank you so much and we couldn't do it without you so thank you brilliant thank you mate thanks for let's, having let's me make yeah, some music it's and fun. uh well you can make some music we'll flap around in the background a little bit <laughs> and uh yeah but cheers guys have a great week and we'll see you soon bye bye bye